Hi, I'm Christopher Jaynes, founder and CTO of Immersive Technologies. We're here in Denver to launch 3.4. So what is Solstice 3.4? Well, it's going to be an interesting release for us because it's got a whole lot of features that take you back past from being an application all the way to becoming really what's a smart, intelligent device that's a platform for your meetings. So you'll see that in things like our digital signage feature and the ability to pull analytics data from the pod put it into your Kepler account. So we'll look at each of those features as we go through this, this launch event. Uh, but I first want to remind you what we used to do in the past, which is still just as valid. We make your meetings faster and better by sharing content from any device that comes into the room. It allows you to start your meeting faster, to parallelize those meetings and get content to the screen. So that hasn't changed. But what has changed over the past 18 months is that our customers have been pushing us very hard to move from making your meetings better to becoming a platform for your meeting culture. Okay, so that's happened in all kinds of forms and we'll take you through that uh, here. So let's start with the digital signage platform. Why would we do that? Well, you can already share content to the screen, so that's pretty interesting, but another form of sharing content to the screen is really where does that digital signage feed come from in the cloud? One of the visions behind Solstice originally was really all your displays are shared communications infrastructure. I'm really excited about this because this is where we start to move into those waters. So it takes signage, like where it used to exist in those transitional spaces or in your lobbies, and allows it to go to places that might not have had the budget before, like your huddle room where we exist today. It also does the inverse. It takes things like collaboration events and moves them to places in your display landscape that live in, in your transitional areas. So those are traditionally just signage spots. But what we've seen as a trend in the marketplace is transitional meetings are super important. Everybody here has done that. When you walk out of a meeting, you have that two minute segment where it's like, hey, can we sync up? I didn't understand what you were doing in that you know, one hour long meeting. Hey, here's a signage screen. Let's turn it into a collaboration hotspot. So I'm super excited about how that's gonna work. Let me show you how it works. If I disconnect from this solstice display, we've already pointed it at a signage feed. So I've just disconnected. And now what you'll see is after 10 seconds, it will fade into what the URL is that we've pointed it to. So this player, the solstice pod now, acts as the signage endpoint. Interesting enough, uh, you're able to turn on three different options. We'll show you that here in a minute. Different overlays from us, you know, like connection instructions and signage. Uh, the display name. Here we've pointed it at our own social media feed, you know, just a bunch of stuff that's feeding in. So let's take a look at it in the dashboard. There's really three options. There is the overlay modes. There's the ability to uh, have full overlay, so everything you've had before, but just the background is your signage feed. You can turn those off, and you can point it at, of course, an arbitrary URL. As long as it's HTML5 content, uh, it should be able to play here on our player. So go ahead and uh, point it at a different feed. In fact, every pod will ship with a immersive.com built-in signage feed so that you can experience it out of the box just to test it. Of course, it's stuff that we find interesting things about meeting culture. And then when you've done that, uh, you'll see here we've got a big, beautiful signage display. But while it's doing that, I can walk up to this and I'm in, okay, I know that's the huddle space that I just walked into. I tap the name of that into the, dis into the um, app on my laptop and I can of course share my desktop and I have a live feed of my Evernote queue on the screen and when I disconnect we've truly dual used that room into a signage endpoint when there's not a meeting in progress. I think it's super compelling because I've been in the field plenty of times where I see a solstice pod sitting next to a signage player and a two input video switch and clever uses of our own APIs to detect a connection event because a meeting's about to start and the video switch switches over to Solstice and then switches back. That's about $1,200 of hardware gear that we can get rid of for you and all the complexity. Plus it gives you more of an integrated experience. Okay, so I wanna show you one last thing about signage before we move on to the next features. It's really a request we've had quite often, the ability to customize your welcome screen. Now you know you can already change your six background images, you can turn on and off different screen elements, but with signage, Think about the ability to stand up a web server on-prem, drop whatever data you want into that server and point your pod at it. That's now your welcome screen, customized to however you want it to be. So is that a, a video that welcomes people to your conference rooms? 
Is it you know, your tech support email that's tickering across the top of the screen? Whatever you can put in HTML5, you can now put on your welcome screen. So let's, let's show an example of that. We're gonna go into the dashboard and point at a different URL. That URL is one we just stood up here at Mersive as an example. And then when we point at it, you know, there you go. That's your signage feed. And when a user connects to that conference room, following the instructions that you've customized, you know, it goes away. Awesome. So I'm excited for you guys to try it, um, download the new version, give it a shot. Okay? So I mentioned that we really feel like we're becoming more of a platform for your modern meeting culture. The reason I believe that is one, this is now not just about wireless collaboration, it's about making your displays intelligent and, and more leveraged. But it also is partly due to the Kepler project. Now 3.4 is interesting because it's the first time you're going to, in the dashboard, see that Kepler has arrived. So there's now going to be a Kepler tab in your dashboard for 3.4. That Kepler tab will give you information about how to get started when Kepler does launch here very, very shortly. But to tell you more about it, I've got Mike Tolliver, um, who's the product manager for Kepler and director of user, user and product experience. Great. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Chris. Um. With Solstice, we focused on delivering the best-in-class wireless content sharing to make each and every meeting better. But what happens when you zoom out and you want to look beyond the individual meeting experience and see how your collaboration spaces are performing as a whole? That's where Kepler comes in. Kepler is Mercer's upcoming real-time monitoring and analytics engine. And those two sides of the coin really serve the same purpose, which is making your meetings better and easier and more efficient. With the monitoring side, you'll be able to detect and resolve any issues before they present a disruption to your end users, and that's very valuable. With the analytics side, you'll be able to gain insight into how your team members engage. What's their collaborative behavior? What's the, what are their preferences? What rooms do they like to go to? Which are the, you know, what are the bottlenecks? And they'll give you information that allow you to make data-driven decisions to make that collaborative experience more efficient, remove those bottlenecks, give your team what they need in order, to, uh, in order to collaborate efficiently. And with the average knowledge worker spending 30 to 40% of their time in meetings, that information is critical. Now 3.4 is the first Solstice release that's Kepler capable, and you'll see a new tab in the dashboard for Kepler. And once launched, that tab will become the place where you import your pods into Kepler and create your own account. That'll be the, uh, the, the launch pad for everything. So, the reason we're talking about Kepler so much for this 3.4 event is so you can get your pods updated and be ready to go uh, whenever Kepler is launched, which will be very soon. So get those pods on 3.4 and you'll be able to take advantage of Kepler as soon as, as, soon as it goes live. Thanks, I'm going to hand it back over to Chris to talk about the rest of 3.4. Awesome, thanks Mike. That's really exciting. I mean, I know the Kepler team's been working a really long time for this moment, so it's, a, it's kind of a big watershed for us. So I'm gonna move a little bit past uh, some of these great platform features you're gonna get in 3.4 and talk about something center of the bullseye for making your meetings more effective, more collaborative, and that's sharing off a tablet, right? So everybody knows that we already have iOS mirroring capabilities, particularly you walk into a room and you know, use your built-in capabilities to swipe up, share to that screen in the room off your iPad, and there it is with audio and video, full screen, great. Ah, but the one downside with products in this category is that YouTube, because of its specialized protocols and careful attention to DRM considerations, makes it a little bit harder to be able to support full screen video playback off any device with DRM. So I'm going to do that now because 3.4 actually supports the ability to go uh, straight out of YouTube app onto the screen. So I've grabbed just a, this looks like an iPhone X, and I've got a couple interesting videos on here. And I'm going to go ahead, I've got the YouTube app launched, and I've selected mirroring, and I'm just going to pick the display name here and show you what happens. That's altitude title space. Pick that guy, and I am now going to have that video playing to this screen. So what's great about it is it's now streaming that content. Let me go ahead and delete some other stuff off there so you can see it full screen. It's streaming that content directly from uh, the, the service in the cloud. So I've got a particular resolution and aspect ratio screen that I happen to go to the meeting with, but I want you to be able to see it in this beautiful, beautiful display at the front of the room. 
So this is a common use case I see in higher education, maybe not as much when I taught, but these days, Lots of information sits in YouTube channels. Maybe it's your, your chemistry lectures or whatever, and you want to get that to the screen. So I'm sure this will be a huge hit. It's always been a, a little bit of a weak spot in the center bullseye of collaboration. I think we had it licked in 3-4. So I'm really excited for everybody to give this one a shot as well. OK, so before I move on to sort of the wrap up piece and talk a bit about what we did for security network hardening, I want to reiterate really what 3-4 is to you as a user. Really, it's you guys that moved us from wireless collaboration to wireless collaboration that's simultaneous and parallelized to really considering the broader picture of what happens in your meeting culture. Your calendar on the screen when you arrive, of course we did that in three, two. Uh, when you come into that room now and, we, and you want to, like Mike was saying, understand how that meeting is unfolding, that's your Kepler account. What happens when the screen's not in use because the room's sitting there and it's got a glass walled huddle space? It transitions to signage. So you can see what's happened with this market here and how we've tried to really keep up with you guys innovating these needs in this new space. It's a new platform that allows your meetings to be much, much better. So that being said, you always have to pay attention to security and enterprise readiness. So if you know Mersive at all, you know our heritage comes directly out of some very highly secure environments, some very big enterprises. We pay attention to this all the time. So it's not a surprise that in the 3.4 release, we had another network hardening pass and some more security feature updates. So as a reminder, every year we do two, two third-party pen tests. We take those results and we make them available to you under NDA in our secure portal. We take, of course, those results very seriously. We take a wire brush to the product and find any spot anywhere that could maybe be a, a security risk and we remove it immediately. Okay, so that happened in 3.4. There's about seven or eight things we did on the networking layer and the drivers to harden it. When I say hardening, I mean it. So if you've got a denial of service attack on your enterprise network that hits the pod thousands of times, we're taking care of that. If you run a security scan and you're visiting various URLs to see what is this IoT device on my network, we've hardened it for those kind of events. So you'll see a lot more stability, a lot more enterprise security built into the 3.4 release as well. I didn't want to miss that, you know, sort of gloss over that because those features aren't as sexy as that I can walk in and show a YouTube video off any device anytime, but they're also just as important to anybody that's deploying at scale. Okay, cool. Before we end, I want to make sure everyone understands that there's still more to come. So if you follow Mersive at all, you know that our pacing is quite aggressive in the market because this space is a nascent space. There are, like I've mentioned, our customers continue to push us aggressively towards some pretty exciting spaces. One of the things I'll hint at, I've been told not to tell you exactly what features are coming, but I'll, tell, I'll hint at where we're focusing. It's really on engagement in the, in the conference room. So some features are coming that will, we think, increase engagement, have your workers, have everybody that's in that room engage with one another in a better way. And in fact, they're really, really fun to use these new features. So keep an eye out for that as, as it comes down the pipe. And I'm glad that you were able to dial in. Thanks for watching.